Assemble the Protean Plus multicasting chamber with the desired amount of Protean Plus hinged spacer plates in the desired gel thickness and width. Protean Plus hinged spacer plates have two widths, 20 cm wide to fit either 17 and 18 cm IPG strips, or 25 cm wide to fit 24 cm IPG strips, as well as three different gel thicknesses of 1, 1.5, and 2 mm. The volume of monomer required depends on several factors, including gel thickness, number of gels, and gel width, all of which can vary depending on your specific requirements. To make a precise determination of the volume of monomer required for your application, measure the volume of deionized water required to fill the casting chamber to the desired level. Then disassemble the chamber, rinse and dry the parts, and repeat assembly and casting using the determined volume of monomer solution plus an extra 10 milliliters. Connect tubing to the inlet port on the casting chamber. The tubing should have two stopcocks, one near the chamber and one near the model 495 gradient former. Insert the end of the stopcock into the gradient former. Close all valves to prepare for casting. Place a magnetic stir plate on a raised surface. Place the gradient former on top of the stir plate. Raise the level of the gradient former so that the bottom is above the top of the glass cassettes in the casting chamber. This creates a hydrostatic head large enough to cast the gels within 10 minutes from the time the initiators are added to the monomer solutions. Place a magnetic stir bar in the chamber labeled light. Add APS and Temid to your degassed light and heavy monomer solutions at this point. Monomer solutions should be made according to the gradient gel percentages desired and amount of solution required. Please see your manual for detailed recipes. In this video, we have artificially colored the heavy solution blue so that you will be able to see the gradient forming. Be aware that your heavy solution should not be blue. Make sure to swirl the solutions to ensure the initiators are evenly incorporated into the monomer solutions. You now have about 10 to 20 minutes to complete the rest of the casting before the acrylamide begins to polymerize. Making sure that the valve stem is closed, pour the light solution into the chamber labeled light and the heavy solution into the chamber labeled heavy. Start the stir plate and adjust the speed so that you get good mixing. Notice that the level of the light solution should be slightly higher than the heavy solution. Start casting the gels by opening the stopcocks to the casting chamber and to the gradient former. Allow the light monomer solution to enter the casting chamber until the level of the light solution is equal to the level of the heavy solution. Open the valve stem on the gradient former once the solution levels are equal. Do not allow air bubbles to enter the gel. This should help compensate for the V-groove in the multicasting chamber. You can see that the finished gel is darker in color on the bottom and gradually gets lighter toward the top, showing that a gradient has been formed. Once again, we artificially colored the heavy solution blue so your gel will be clear. Overlay each gel as quickly as possible with the same volume of water-saturated butanol or T-amyl alcohol. Alternatively, insert a Protean Plus 2D comb into each hinged spacer plate. To minimize bubble formation, insert the comb at an angle. Allow at least two hours for polymerization. After polymerization, remove the sealing plate from the multicasting chamber.
Remove the gels from the stack one at a time using the green gel releaser. Place the gel releaser between two plates on the hinged side. Pull the gel releaser forward, pushing against the back plate still inside the chamber. This should push and move one plate forward and release it from the rest of the stack. Trim off excess acrylamide around the glass edges with the gel releaser. Rinse off the tops of all the gels thoroughly with distilled water. Wash off any pieces of excess acrylamide with distilled water. The gels are now ready to use. To store, place the gel cassette in a tightly sealed container or Ziploc bag. Add a few milliliters of 1x gel buffer to the bottom of the container and to the tops of the gels to prevent them from drying out. Store tightly sealed at 4 degrees Celsius. Clean the entire casting chamber thoroughly with distilled water.